Welcome to my podcast. I'm your host, Mike Del Ferro. And in this series, The Echoes of Toots, I talk to outstanding harmonica players from all over the world about Toots Tielemans. I had the great honor to play with Toots for 10 years. He passed away in 2016. And in the last years, I've been doing a Toots tribute all over the world with many harmonica players. In these episodes, I talk to several harmonica players about their musical journey, how Toots influenced their music, and how they found their own voice on the harmonica with such an influential musician like Toots. I'm sitting here with Pablo Vagundes, a wonderful harmonica player from Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. He is a um, very charismatic, energetic harmonica player, also a great entrepreneur. He has been organizing house concerts for 10 years in his house in Brasilia, which became a huge success. And uh, I'm going to talk to him with, uh, about uh, many things. Pablo, thank you so much for, uh, for joining Hey, Mike Del Ferro, <laughs> it's a pleasure for me to talk to you, uh, and it's really great to have you uh, ask me something about my job, my, my life, it will be nice, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, you're, you're a fascinating figure, I mean, so we had the pleasure uh, a while ago, you, I was touring in Brazil. And then you invited me to play at one of your very successful house concerts. And um, this was not like a, a, a concert for 10 people. This was an extremely well-organized professional concert venue. A lot of people with food, with uh, professional catering, a chef, uh, incredible sound, incredible musicians. So uh, that's the level you operate. How did these house concerts come about? Yeah, this house concert uh, come like uh, after I I travel uh, you, for uh, United States and France, and then I have a concert there, a good concert, plus some house concert. So I saw this, I I had this experience in the past, uh, and then I try to organize something here in my house in brazil and then uh we 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 have a, a space we we build a space for do that it's my is my office but also uh, become a, a a show show place so uh we start in 2016 uh the first the first uh, show that we had it was with Chris Stiles Bacon. It's a beatbox Ameri American guy. Uh, it's a rapper. I think it's rapper, the, the, the name that can uh, explain how this guy do. He sing, he percuss, uh, play percussion, and, and then uh, do some raps. And I have a, a job with these guys. And, and I, I take this opportunity to, to have the first one. You did the last one. <laughs> so between this space, we, 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 we learn how to do the things. But I do this house concert uh, to create an atmosphere uh, for music, for create music, for playing music. So, and, and everything, every, every, everything's, Come, come around is like food, some drinks, and and hospitality. It's uh, the thing that I love to do, like uh, the people do for me when I travel, when I play in some place. Someone have a good hospitality, someone don't have a good hospitality. So I love that side. <laughs> the, the the people. I uh, want to have music. Uh, so the, the Sol in Casa is a place that we do with too much love. It's like, man, we do for patient. 
And right now, uh, this place is like uh, a place for for a good networking because the people come here. The people uh, already know the Solen Casa, uh, and the people come to see other people. But everyone have some connection with the culture, with the music. So it's is is that's it. <laughs> it's the Solen Casa, like you did in my house. A big show from Mike Del, Del Ferro here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's true, you know, when I, as soon as I walked into the house, because I also mm. stayed with you, you had like uh -huh. a guest room, we have a guest room. Um, I felt the incredible love, the respect, the hospitality. I must say, this is also something in general in Brazil, which is great. You know, we can learn a lot from this in Europe. It's also a very Brazilian thing, but um, um, yeah, and also the quality of the food. It was really amazing. I mean, like I said before, it's a really like a professional concert. Uh, how many have you done so far? Uh, we we did uh, 80, 80, 81, I think, 81 yeah. shows, 81 Son en Casa. Uh, it's, it's like 10, 10 by year, like this. Yeah. Yeah, for Each the listeners. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot about 10 a year. Yeah. For the listeners, Son en Casa means uh, sounds at the house. Correct. Exactly. So it's from the exactly. house. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, yeah. And I was also because the network there is also quite incredible, I must say, because um, Brasilia, of course, is the capital of Brazil. So all the embassies are based there, and there were a lot of uh, ambassadors, and everybody like uh, reserves their Saturday night to to attend these house concerts. It's a big thing. Yeah. No, it is, and we we. We have a project to to show the embassy for the for the the people through the the videos and uh, through through the music uh, and mix with the culture. We did one in in Belgium, Belgian embassy. Uh, it was great. It's, if the people want want to know uh, how uh, how beautiful is one embassy in, in particular each one has have your own style and in this video I, I i i show the embassy i i talk to the amb ambassador and uh i play some music from from jacks brell and toots tillman yeah 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 lovely Yeah, we'll get to Toots a little bit later. Because uh -huh. um, I also wanted to ask you about you personally. We've been talking about the house concerts, but okay. you're an amazing harmonica player. And um, also, uh, we played together at the house concert, but also you took me to the Club de Choro. And then I noticed your, um, yeah, your incredible knowledge about Brazilian music, Choro, the whole repertory. Can you tell me a little bit more about your musical background, your musical development. Yes. Uh, I think I, I take the, the same way that the, the harmonica players uh, start there. I start with the blues. I, I think it's, it's the most common uh, channel to, to start to play harmonica. Uh, especially when I start, it's like a long time ago. So... We don't have we, we we did we didn't have uh, internet when I start so I just start play harmonica by here and uh, and keep with the diatonic like like many years I never I never uh, I, I'm away with my diatonic but today I, I'm work with chromatic harmonica and then. Uh, when, when I finish, because I'm a florist engineer, when I finish this course in 2002, I decide, uh, only, uh, music in my life, whole a hundred percent, because I, I split with this course, like five years, uh, stud, uh, some chemicals and <laughs> mathematics, uh, And then tonight, and 
tonight, oh, sorry, my English. And no then worries. at night, I play. So, like, I, I split my life during five years. And then in 2002, I decide just uh, play harmonica and uh, play music for life. And after that, uh, I, I decide to, to find uh, something in my culture and play in my instrument that I, is my passion. So I start to, to, to learn Brazilian music and, uh, and I, I, man, I, I spend many hours to, to learn a uh, repertoire Repertoire, repertoire, right? Repertoire. Repertoire. Yeah. Uh, repertoire. Yeah. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time. And in Brazil, is not uh, harmonica. And at that time, is not a popular instrument. And without internet, without the things, man, we, we don't have a lot of influence in, in Brazil. I have uh, Maurice Einhorn and and uh, Rio Duora, Edu da Gaita, but uh, it's it's only it's it's it's, it's ne- oh, I'm sorry for such uh, a big country. There are not too many harmonica players somehow. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. then and then I I decide to 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 look for other instruments like man- mandolin and uh, accordion. And I, I take the solos from these instruments and put in my harmonica. And then I think after uh, years, uh, I, I, I find this way, uh, especially when, when I start to, to uh, play Brazilian music, uh, I, I have a lot of, a lot of things to 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 do because uh, the people when know that oh this music can play with you can play this music with your harmonica and when people realize that okay my my landscape open like a lot of work uh, to to do because i i learn my culture i i play harmonica in brazilian music so i don't know if i can i can explain in english <laughs> right no it's very but, no no don't, don't worry about your english but 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 you're basically saying that to to add the to incorporate the harmonica into brazilian music you kind of added a, a, a fresher fresh sounds to brazilian music exactly exactly yeah. Yeah. and and then uh, I keep them this way. I love to play jazz. I love to, I, I try to play jazz, but I feel good when I play Brazilian music. So, but I, I love challenge, like your repertoire, like, hey man, have something there. I need to learn. And I yeah. take my time and I learn your music to play with you. And I do this with everyone that I have opportunity to, to work. I think this is a good way to, to, to keep working. You know what I mean? And to grow, to grow and keep working. If you do yeah. that with, with a hundred percent that you have to, to, uh, to give with this job, uh, poss- it's possible that you play one more time with this gig. You know what I mean? Of so, course. Of course, <laughs> I you know, I, 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 t- I teach, uh, especially young people. I mean, I'm not that old myself, but I have this course uh, networking and self-management for musicians. And, uh, I also have a separate podcast from this and it's quite successful. And, um, I always tell, I always say to every young musician, starting musician, like a successful career in music is 200%. It's 100% playing great, and the other 100% is mentality. And this is a great example of mentality. You know, if you are always very dedicated, whoever you play with, uh, whoever invites you or whatever, whoever sends you a tune to play, and you just make sure you nail it and you play it well, that's a great ticket to to more work, more context. People will invite you, for, you know, that can 
that can expand internationally. Because I was actually pleasantly surprised by the way you and the guys, uh, the rhythm section also had prepared my music. It's really, I mean, because I arrived the same day, you know, I had like a horrible flight with the, uh, it's called the rat eye, you know, terrible uh, time, flying times and tired, only slept three hours. And we rehearsed like one hour and was, was, was fine. And I really appreciated that. And it's true because now I have like, man, I'm going to, you know, it's, I, I would love to work with you again in the future because of uh, the way you treated the music in a very professional, respectful way. And that's what I try to do with other people as well. It's important. And that, that's, that's what expense. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so I, important. I, I love to, to learn uh, uh, like music that you write, wrote, like, because when, when people play my music, like you play in, uh, in, in Sol in Casa, we play Flauta Prefada, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, man, it's for me, it's, it's uh, the, the way the mix, the culture, Okay, you play some Bayon, really Bayon from yeah. Brazilian guy, and I play some jazz from yeah. from Holland guy. So we <laughs> yeah. we I I learn a lot when I when I when I take my time to 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 learn new music from some new composer, yeah. like yeah, like yeah. this. You know, I got criticized sometimes. Um, that they say, yeah, Mike, you're always uh, traveling and uh, you always play with local musicians, which is a terrible word because everywhere in the world we're fantastic musicians. You know, the word local sounds terrible, but okay, uh, you know what I mean. And uh -huh. um, and I got criticized like, yeah, where's your band sound? You know, you play always with the same people. And I always say, no, it's the other way around. When I go to let's say Brazil or to Africa, wherever I go on the planet and I play with people who have such a strong culture, even mu songs I've been playing many for many years, they sound fresh because everybody gives their own, their, their, yeah, their own, uh, you know, it's, it's either, whether it's a rhythmical thing or a harmonical thing, it doesn't matter. People put their original taste into the music, their original culture, And it makes things start, sound totally fresh. That's what I love about it. That's why traveling is so enriching. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy my podcast, then please subscribe, leave a rating and a review. Please visit my website, mikedelferro.com, where you also will find links to my other podcast, Self-Management for Musicians. You will also find links to my music and my socials. And of course, please share this podcast with anyone interested. Nothing beats the word of mouth. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like Pedro Almeida did in your, your music with the drums, right? right? Man, what a drummer. What a drummer. This... Pedro Almeida. Check him out, everybody. Wow. Yeah, this, this guy yeah. I played. Always in my quartet, my trio, it's Pedro Almeida with me. <laughs> and yeah. he know all my music. If I if I write some new music, if I put some new music, he take the 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 shit music and start to think how groove I put here. Yeah. Man, it's it's very nice to work with musicians like Pedro Almeida, Milton Pinheiro. Nah? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful players. It's a great scene in Brasilia, actually. Because everybody always talks about Rio, Sao Paulo. Of course, there is a lot of music in both cities and, and Bahia, wherever you go in Brazil, Porto Alegre. But Brasilia has a serious music scene, right? Yeah, I think the Choro uh, brings some, some good music uh, for Brasilia. Like, we have a lot of meetings like... Uh, Roda de Choro, like you went with me, we have a lot of uh, place that have one table and great musician uh, playing and have some beer. It's like informal thing, but the music is high level. Wow, yes. And, and then it, this is my, my, my 
my way to to grow like okay if i want to sit with this guy i need to to play the music like some choro like 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 them so uh that that's i think this is is but if you don't go in, in if you don't search places like that you don't see the good music you know what i mean like yeah. if you go uh like pop some pop uh like you you don't have a good music like like other 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 place right yeah and and you have to know the locals or the local musicians again that terrible word local but <laughs> this this but it's very convenient sometimes because you know without you and then and then we went after the club du Shoru, we went to this it was like a percussion festival because Ooh. some musician told us like hey and then there was like an incredible evening and you know, you even didn't know it was happening. It was amazing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Brasilia is it's they have also uh, um, regional regional music from Brazil, like like uh, maracatu, frevo, uh, baião. In in that place, they 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 have a boy. It's it's other other style. Like they have a. How do you say call <laughs> boy? Man, it's yeah, a, it's a. They have some dancer and music and percussion and and you have these like everywhere, <laughs> every time you know every we every weekend we have something like like that. But I I did a lot. I go with you because like I I want to show you you know uh for you feel this culture but right now i have childs in my house <laughs> i need to take yeah. care for my daughter so I, i i don't i don't go a lot like i did in the past but uh it is a part of of construction of um brazilian musician i got it <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 brazil has this flow so so that's the great thing i think it's also in other places in latin america i've experienced the, th the same thing in the morning you never go know what's going to happen in the evening especially in terms of of music you know you go someone invites you to to go to whether they play somewhere and they, hey there's someone playing there and this kind of flow is so unique especially in brazil it's really amazing because we ended up in this per at this percussion festival i was like and it was really totally a big amazing event so, oh man i loved it yeah, yeah this yeah. this is uh with with some support from government you know they 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 go the government from uh, brasilia they they have some support for events like like this they pay for a structure they pay for artists and then Uh, you have a free event to to feed feeding feeding yeah to, yeah to, to feeding <laughs> yeah 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 uh, it's very beautiful because you know Brasilia is kind of a um, surrealistic surreal city yeah? and 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 like we we like like we know in europe like uh, brasilia it's like a constructed city it's in the form of an airplane it's the you know all the, the government is there so from the outside there is always like yeah this little bit this stiff place or not so you know and and uh, you know but it's really happening there's so much incredible music there it's wonderful yeah the people the people uh need to discover brasilia <laughs> you know what i mean because yeah. when when you discover the 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 good way in brasilia you, man you you want to come back <laughs> i'm yeah. sure you know yeah what I mean? well it's like i can't it, wait to come back <laughs> it's it's i have a lot of friends that uh study music in brasilia and then go to rio and sao paulo and 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 i i I I have opportunities before but oh I'm sorry I have a I I I think sometimes I want to 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 do that but today 
I don't, I don't, I don't care about that because in Brasilia we have a lot of good musicians. I can, I can play with a really strong quartet here, and I can uh, travel with this musician around the, the world. So, yeah, uh, I think Brasilia is it's a good place to 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 have a, a quality for life. You know what I mean? We have a space here. We, when you compare to Rio and São Paulo, you know what I mean. So for me, it's my my page. I, I love my city. Yeah, and it's it's also compared to other cities. In my in my perception, it's quite safe as well. So we, we also big difference with other cities. In Brazil, you have to be careful, and um, yeah, and it's I mean great places to play. Incredible infrastructure, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Brasilia is uh, is something else, yeah. It's great. Um, the the people think, oh, it's a political place, yeah. like you did, like you said. But man, we have more than this. <laughs> yeah. Plus, in your case, I mean, you know, I mean, you are now known all over the country, and the flight connections in Brazil in Brazil. Are incredible. You can fly anywhere within a couple of hours. So I mean, yes. you know, because you, you, you were born and raised in Brasilia, right? Yes, I born here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's move a little bit to Toots. Um, okay. And this is the question um, I'm, I'm asking everyone. Um, actually, two questions: How has he influenced you? And have you ever met him? That's also a question. And later, I want to ask you, how do you find your own style being a harmonica player with Toots being so influential? Uh, okay. I have an uh, opportunity to, to talk to Toots uh, three times in, in my life. One time, it wa was uh, when he played at the Canecão uh, in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, and me and others great harmonica player from Brazil uh, come together to see this this show and after we we talk it it was great but in that time I don't have a uh, uh, it, it's it's true it's crowd is a lot of people there okay I, I talk fast with him take a picture but later uh, I, I when I play in Fortaleza, Guaramiranga, a big festival, jazz festival there, and Toots are the 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 big name of the this festival. I I'm I'm play at the same festival with my quartet, and then uh, wait for for a uh, show from uh, Toots, né? Uh, wait for for the moment. The uh, and then they have a. a open check sound fr from the red lines like Toot Stillman when checks check the sound for the concert. Oh, sound check. Uh, sound check, sorry. Uh, sound check, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do something like open sound check and if you want to see how they, 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 they sound check, uh, it's possible in, in that time, in that, in that festival. So I, I went there And the the pro, the producer uh, saw me on the on the on the oh my god on the stage on the stage he saw, he saw you at the venue uh, yes yeah at the venue and asked me to 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 talk to Toots ask something for for Toots and 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 then I go to to the stage and I talk to Toots uh, and I ask. Uh, Why, Toots, you, you, you don't play in 64, you love 48? And, and he said to me, oh, because in 48 uh, fits everything that I need. So I, I don't know if I, I translate. <laughs> I, no, I, but just, just for the listener, can you explain the difference between 64 and 48? Yes, uh, 64 is... Uh, It's a big harmonica, four octave. We have one a plus a bass octave, 
uh, than when you have a 48. 48, you, it's harmonica, uh, just uh, 12 holes. So you have uh, three octaves. And the 64, you have 16 holes uh, and fit four octaves. Uh, it's a uh, octave in, I think in jazz is not uh, really usable, usable. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's yes, good. yeah. And, uh, but in Chorinho, it's, man, I, I need <laughs> these low notes to play Chorinho. Uh, but Toots, uh, Toots can, um, do everything with just three octaves. It's crazy. It's amazing. And then uh, after after this moment, when when I go to the backstage before the show, I I talk one more time. Ah no, bef- sorry. Uh, in in that in that moment, I take my harmonica and I uh, and I play some music from Mauricio Hi- Einhorn and to take. Uh, his harmonica and play with me. It's like it's a moment that I I save for for whole life. And then okay, I play with dudes. Like oh man, <laughs> it's it's something something that that I can't imagine that that will 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 happen. And I'm I'm so glad. And after that, I go to the backstage and talk to Toots one more time. Hey, Toots, and uh, and he he said, "Oh, do you know why I play harmonica? It's because uh, I, this instrument I can bend the notes and I can uh, do my my how do you say uh, my my feels my my." Your soul, or, or, my soul, yeah, my soul through the this band, like, uh, and he he get my harmonica and play the chromatic harmonica without the key. The, he, ah, oh, where your harmonica? Give me, take the harmonica. And... So I, 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 when I hear this, oh, come on, this guy is, it's, it's uh, in the fr- future. <laughs> it's this, how do you say in the front? ahead of his time, ahead of yeah, his time. Exactly, yeah. man. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and, but my, my sound, I, 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 I love toots. I play, I play uh, some three boots. I love to to play toots, but my sound I think is not it's not the same way to to the toots. I think I I, I take another <laughs> venue, another another street, and and come to the Brazilian music. But toots have a, a big influence for me in Brazilian music also, because he record with Sivuca a whole album and and <laughs> i saw the dvd it's it's crazy uh it's dudes like like a brazilian guy with t-shirts like brazilian t-shirt and walk to the to the uh markets streets with with sivuca <laughs> so it's very so cool. interesting if the people want to search in youtube Put uh, Toots Tillman and Sivuca, and you can see this image. And he record with Elise Regina. He do the the two CDs, the Brazil project. Man, it's for me. It's a big influence because uh, a Belgian guy uh, put all the thing because. The, He's he's a big big musician, like, and put your energy in our music. So, I'm 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 glad that Toots uh, did this for for our music. Oh man, he loved Brazilian music. 
he, he talks about it a lot actually and he used, he said something um harmonically about brazilian music which which i think is so so beautiful he said in brazilian music you know usually in music when you play a minor chord there is a little bit this more like sad feeling you know mm -hmm. and he said in brazilian music sometimes the minor chord can sound like a major chord or something alegre like like uh -huh. like uh, joyful <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, maybe it's the word saudade, which you have, you know, which is kind of hard to explain, you know, something in between uh, mel uh, something mel melancholic or uh, something in between and, and happiness. But and I since he said that I and I started analyzing Brazilian music, I realized it's so true. You guys have placed the minor chord in places where it sounds really happy. Yes, and that's such a powerful thing. And he yeah. In Chorinho, we have a lot of minor Chorinhos, like, okay, D minor Choro. Man, when you hear the music, it's like for dance, for, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not. Because Choro is, is crying, eh? the, when you translate Choro, yeah. it means Chora, crying, yeah. crying. So, yeah. but the music, it, the music can put you to cry, but... Uh, can put also uh, you happy and you know in, 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 in my perception whenever I listen to Shoru it, it sounds quite happy it, 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 it's, it's not like like, um, like, like, a, like a sad Jobim song or something like that or from Chico Buarque something more, more melancholic to me Shoru mm -hmm. uh, sounds very very positive. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's play some choro, Mike Del Ferro. Let's play some <laughs> choro. <laughs> yeah, well, what happens when we when you brought me to the choro place, and you invited me to play with all these incredible musicians? It was also this this lady with the pandero. Oh my God, the percussionist Larissa Maita. Oh my God, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll put every everything you were talking about um, in the show notes of this podcast. I'll put all the links. I'll wow. also put the link. Of, I'll find the the YouTube video of Toots with Zivuka and. I'll put ah. it over there and, and your website with your home concerts. But then you, but then I was, um, you invited me to, and you know, and there was a keyboard there, but I didn't know most of the songs. I mean, I know the Brazilian standards and, and then you said to me, and I'm going to, uh, to ask you about this. I won't forget. You said, you know, you have to learn 10 Shoru songs. And when you know them, then you can easily go to a lot of Shoru jam sessions and sit in. So, yes, yeah. this is a good idea, man. Yeah, I'm st I'm waiting for that list, Pablo. You have to send me that list. I I will send you the list and the sheet music. I will yeah. do I will do comp yeah complex. <laughs> yeah, and then, and, then, and then it's that's my turn to do my homework and learn your music. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Nice, right. man. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, finding find your your own. Your own style. Well, you, you already mentioned something like you incorporated in Brazilian music. But what always fascinates me, doing the Toots tribute, meeting so many great harmonica players, and they kind of seem to sometimes struggle with finding their own voice because he was so influential, such a unique instrument. He was a pioneer, a genius, et cetera, et cetera. So how did you find your own style, which yeah, you I have? I find my my own style. I, man, this is is something like you don't you don't have a, a, a t t exactly time, and and the people uh, sometimes said, "Oh, you have that song, you have." But it's something like you, I think is it's uh, always changing. It's like. Uh, with time it's more mature and, and you know what i mean it's i i don't i don't think when i i ha, i can remember okay since that time i find my song no and and i i'm i never uh think about that i i don't that's I don't, great i don't play like oh i need to find my song it's like i just do like i said like i i I hear the the seventh string guitar. Sometimes the people said me, "Oh, how do you find these lines? How do you 
do some some contrapoint like this man this is is natural it's like okay i i i i take from seven string guitar i hear the seven string i play the same in my instrument and then i think this is like you you build you build the, the your your song and then it's not when you find your song and and then, and then keep with this i don't know i think always i'm change but my i know that i know when i play i put my soul i put my experience that i that i have in that moment and then when finish the show next next day okay keep working keep keep playing and then you, when you have another opportunity you put everything so when people watch you play like i think feel oh this guy have have your own sound but i don't think i i i search for you know i do my job <laughs> i think it kind of became came naturally rather than trying to to somehow bypass exactly. to or, or do something different because that's the thing a lot of harmonica players i talked to and i played with to, um they they told me but I, i'm happy for you you don't have this this challenge you know that's beautiful yeah and no. i hear it i hear i hear a unique harmonica player i don't hear a, a toots clone but but i always find it it intrigues me how harmonica players treat this issue yeah no because i i think the 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 musician don't need to lost time to find <laughs> your i think it's my opinion like no man just if you are a harmonica player just keep playing and something is very important if if you want to find uh your style is just learn music from the style that you want to play good and maybe your song can can uh born there you know yep. when you when you find the, the style that you you love to play you love to to hang when i don't know it's it's like keep playing and your sound it's it's will be with you <laughs> beautiful beautiful thank you pablo thank you for um for these wise words and for this interview oh thank you mike del ferro <laughs> thank me, you pablo fagundes <laughs> for me is like man uh i feel with you like a old friend you know we yeah. we we spend like two days together but i learn from from you from your your videos from your podcast it's very 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 good podcast and when i hear hear you talking your in your podcast so I, i i think this guy is like do do the a lot of things uh in the same way like me i i i i'm realize when when you when you uh, explain about points from from musician ca- career it's like man this this is the right way to 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 understand this to to do that it's very very good for everyone and and for for professionals also right for me is like i loved when when you when you said like oh i will play with the drum from kate Tra- jared jared yeah oh yeah jack jack chichonet yeah exactly i will play with him and man but i'm not k charity so have fun man have fun yeah. and do your job and put your soul put your music and have fun yeah that's what jack said to me when i was playing with keith at a big concert uh, sorry when i was playing with him at uh-huh. a, in trio at a big concert hall in taiwan and i was so nervous because <laughs> you know you get the the the, the keith jared syndrome like you know i thought no i'm i'm not keith jared i'm mike del ferro and i'm you know and uh, how how can i ever get to this level yeah and then he came up to me and said you just remember one thing when you get on that stage and that's have fun you know and he came so close uh-huh. that i could even smell his breath you know 
and he looked at me with this intense yeah and then i and then it's and it, in, in a way it sounds simplistic and i realized man it's so valuable what he's saying here you know yeah because we simply forget if we are in a kind of a stressful environment with new people or whatever that we sometimes we tend to forget that playing music it's all about having fun. And that's when it starts happening. Exactly. Yeah, and I feel the same when Mike Del Ferro come to play <laughs> with me in, in my house concerts. Like, oh, I'm not toots, but I want to have fun with this guy. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, but but that's, you know, that's that's such a... I don't, I don't think like that. I don't go like, oh, you know, I hear a great harmonica player from... Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, with his own voice, also being a master in Brazilian music, you know, all the rhythms, you know, you have, your country is a musical planet on earth, and you know all the music from, from all, the, all the, you know, uh, all the regions, and, you know, I don't go like, oh, this guy is not too, I, I never, I, I'm, not, I'm not into comparing musicians. Yeah, no, the, but this is, is uh it's the mindset that we need to to set right when yeah. you have a for me it's, it's a kind of challenge play with you but but i know you don't expect that i that i i am too it's like <laughs> I, I know because any any uh, nobody can can be <laughs> Toots, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like no, no, but and it's not about expectation, it's about appreciation for someone with a unique voice like you. Ah, uh, no, okay, I got you, but yeah, I, 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 I talk about my what I feel before meeting you personally, you know, that's why I'm prepared to 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 have your music like done, <laughs> try yeah. to, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but but I understand what you're saying because, in all honesty, what I was just saying about Keith, uh, about, sorry, about Jack Dejonet playing with Jack, you know, it's like you're playing with Jack Dejonet, and you don't want to think like, oh, Jack doesn't think I'm Keith Jarrett, exactly. You know? But Jack is not like that. You know, exactly. He's a beautiful human being. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the right way to 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 think when you have challenge like this, right? Yeah. You know, he said to me once. He said, I, I love to play with Herbie because of how Herbie breaks up the rhythm, you know, all these rhythmical patterns mm -hmm. and polyrhythm, rhythmical stuff, blah, blah, blah. And he said, and I love to play with Danilo Perez because Danilo really has this incredible Latin feel. So he, he mentioned a couple of pianist people he loves to play with because of their their their, their assets, their, their special thing. And he said, when it comes to Keith, you know, it's just because... I think Keith Jarrett is the most incredible improviser in the world because he never, ever repeats himself. That's what I appreciate. He said, but if it comes to playing Latin, you know, I don't play with Keith if I want to play with a Latin feel uh -huh. or with someone who does a lot of polyrhythmical stuff, then, then, then I have to play with Herbie, you know? So he, you know, in that way he kind of compares, but it's not like, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, compare it like, oh, this, this, this musician is better than anyone else. He just sees the in individual value of people he loves to play with. And that was a big insight for me. Yeah. It's, it's when it is, is to take, to, to have a good sound and, and in style, you need to, to take some good musician that influence you to, to play that, that style. Like you said, uh, Latin, Wow, let's play with another musician, right? If yeah. you if you wanna, if yeah, it's it's the smart thing. Yeah, I mean, same with Brazil. I mean, you know, I always knew about Brazilian music. I, I listen. I've been listening to it for for many many years, but only since I've been playing in Brazil a lot. I really and I, I still think I'm only starting. I, but I start understanding a little bit about the true feeling and the deepness of this music you know to get it in your system you know because if you're born in a country it's called you know uh, it's called uh, the netherlands it means the low country you know we have you know we, we have a totally different culture we don't have this rhythmical harmonical uh, and melodical culture which you guys have so i have to come from far to to to, to play this music and i've got unique opportunities to play with people like you and only now I start going like, okay, I, I think I start to understand a little bit now 
or how it really feels to play this music. And I'm just very grateful for that. Yeah. That's, uh, That's so uh, I'll keep coming back, Pablo. Yeah. I, I'm, um, I waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, we'll, we'll, we'll do more. And um, again, I'm going to um, put all the links your link from your website, your, your, your Insta, whatever. I, I, I'll, I'll put everything in the, in the description of this podcast in the show Great. notes so people can uh, can find your music and uh, also about your house concerts i'll put everything there so people uh, will that's, have uh, yeah and of course you're you're great playing that's uh, great thank you for share uh this all these links and thank you for inviting me man i love to talk to you i want to keep close we will thank you so much obrigado valeu mike <laughs> valeu Abraço. Abraço. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy my podcast, then please subscribe, leave a rating and a review. Please visit my website, mikedelferro.com, where you also will find links to my other podcast, Self-Management for Musicians. You will also find links to my music and my socials. And of course, please share this podcast with anyone interested. Nothing beats the word of mouth. Thank you.